All right, everyone. We're continuing with Frankie Sparks and the class pets. Now we're going to read chapter seven. Designing a solution. It was time to head to her inventing lab. The lab had been a closet, but she and her parents had cleaned everything out of it. She had a small work table with a stool that rolled beneath it. Above the table hung a pegboard full of tools, and below were stacking crates full of cardboard scraps, Lego bricks, wires, and more. Most of her supplies had been rescued from the family recycling bin. Her lab was where she made all her inventions, and she had a lot of them. There was the horn helper, a special device to go into the unicorn's horn so it could pick up trash at the beach. That had been a great invention, aside from not being able to find a unicorn to test it. Another favorite was her perfect pancakers. Frankie loved to help her dad make breakfast on the weekends, and she had invented a special scoop that picked up just the right number of blueberries or chocolate chips, dropped them into the pancakes. It worked better than stirring them into the batter, plus she got to make construction truck sounds while she used it, since it looked and worked a lot like an excavator. She still had to prototype for that one, made out of an old toy truck sitting on her shelf. And then there was the color-changing cap. She had made that for Maya. It was a swim cap with lights on it that blinked all different colors. She'd sewn the lights on. Maya couldn't wear it in the pool, of course, but she had looked the coolest in the teen pictures. Frankie bit her lip when she thought about Maya. It didn't feel good to have her best friend mad at her. It felt like opening up a box of cereal and finding only dust and broken flakes. It felt like playing in a, with a paper airplane that always dropped straight to the ground. But Frankie had only been trying to help. She knew that Maya would be disappointed when the boring beta fish didn't get picked. She was trying to get Maya onto the winning team. The twinge in her stomach told her maybe that wasn't 100% true. She took a deep breath. What she needed to do was figure out how to feed this rat. Then maybe Maya would understand. Maybe Maya would even decide to vote for the rat at all on her own. Ravi's words still rang in her brain unless you know of some rotor that can feed itself. That was the solution. It was just like Aunt Gina had said, the rat needed to be fed every day, but she didn't have to feed it. The rat could feed itself. She went back to her pile of notes. Rats are very smart, she read in her own wobbly handwriting. They are used in experiments. They are trained to do things like come when called, fetch and press a button for food. Frankie grinned. She had her solution. She needed to make it so the rat could feed itself by pushing a button. Luckily, she was the world's best third grade inventor. So she knew that with a little work, she'd be able to design a rat self feeder. In the picture she had seen online and in books, the button seemed to open up a hatch that let the food drop down. That would take levers and springs. She thought she might need to do something a little simpler. She took a blank piece of paper, drew a small rat and its food bowl. How can I get the food to drop into there? She drew a little bucket and the word and wrote the word food on it. If the rat could tip the bucket somehow, then it could feed itself. Easy enough, she thought. She drew little arrows to show how the bucket could move and how it would dump the food. And here's her picture of a rat. Next, it was time to make a prototype, which was another word that Frankie liked a lot. A prototype was like the rough draft of a paper, the kind you turn into a teacher for feedback before you make it better. With her prototype, she'd be able to test her design and make sure it worked. 
She dug through her crate and pulled out the cardboard tube from an empty roll of toilet paper. She always kept them for her building. She hummed and tapped her lips as she looked at the various options at, in the recycling crate. What could work as a bucket? A shoebox. No, too big. A plastic container from the deli? That might work for a stand in for the rat's food dish. When she picked it up, she saw a snack-sized yogurt container underneath. Perfect! She gave it a sniff. 100% clean. There's Frankie at her workbench. Her wire spool hung on the pegboard right next to the wire cutters. Her mom had taught her how to use the wire cutters, and she carefully trimmed off two pieces, each about six inches long. It was hard to poke holes in the yoga container, but she managed. She twined the wire through each part until the yoga container hung off the toilet paper tube like a basket of a hot air balloon. She pushed open the button of the yoga cup, and it tilted down. Simple, but effective. Those were the best kinds of inventions, she thought. The tube would send the food down into the bucket. Then the rat would, rat would tip the bucket when it felt hungry. Frankie's family didn't have any pets, so she didn't have any pet food she could use. Maya had plenty, had a friendly old dog named Opus and a shack, shy cat named Delilah. If she and Maya hadn't been fighting, she could have gone over to get some pet food from their house. Frankie frowned, but she let herself be down for only a minute. She decided to use rice instead of pellets when she tested her design. As soon as she started dumping in the rice, she realized the problem. The tube was supposed to get the food into the cup, but instead the rice spilled out into the tube and onto the, the, her table. Some went into the yoga cup, but a lot went out. She tightened up the wire so that the cup was closer to the tube. Now when she tried, the rice went in easily. And when she tilted the cup, the rice poured out perfectly. Frankie clapped her hands and ran out of her lab. She almost smacked right into her dad. Whoa there, where's the fire? Testing phase, Frankie announced. What are you making? He asked. Is it for the rat? Sure is, she replied. Her dad grinned. That's my Frankie. I told you that you just needed to get busy. Frankie started running again. Her socks slid on the floor as she rounded the corner to the hall and sprinted to her bedroom. Her stuffed animals were all in a big basket. She tossed them out one after another. Bear, dog, penguin. Where is it? she exclaimed. Elephant, another dog, hippo. Finally, at the very bottom, she found what she was looking for, a small mouse dressed in a suit coat with shiny black buttons. One year, Maya's family had taken Maya and Frankie to see the Nutcracker and had bought them toys. Maya had gotten a Clara doll and Frankie had chosen this soldier. Why did everything remind her of Maya and the fight they were having? Mouse in hand, she ran back to her lab. Standing at her desk, she took a deep breath. Hi, she said, speaking to, for the mouse. I may look like a mouse in a fancy jacket, but really I'm a rat and I'm very hungry. She hopped the mouse along the table. In her other hand, she held up her invention. What's this? Hmm, smells like food. She lifted the stuffed mouse so that it could tip the yoga cup. The invention worked, and the cup dumped the rice all over the mouse. Whoops, Frankly ex exclaimed. She figured a rat, no matter how hungry it was, wouldn't want to have the food dumped all over him. After all, there were days when all she could think about was pizza, 
but she didn't want to show up at Farmington House of Pizza and have a pepperoni pie thrown in her face. The solution came to her pretty quickly. She took a popsicle stick and duct tape, two of an inventor's greatest tools, and taped the stick flat to the bottom of the yogurt container. Now the rat could come up from behind the container, push up on the stick with like a lever, and dump out the food, safe from harm. She grinned. She added a cap to the top of the tube to keep the food extra fresh, fresh and bam, her prototype was complete.